what is object oriented programming and why do we need it when you search on google about op it will give you very complicated answer but op is not complicated at all op is developed to solve real world complex problem in a simple way object oriented programming assumes that everything in the world is an object and each object can have unique properties now let's take a real life example to understand this concept consider we want to build a program to store data of all the persons in india this program seems to be complicated at first but if you try to solve it with op concept then it is very easy to solve so op assumes that each person in a world is an object which has unique property like name age gender so structure used to store this property is called as class now consider we want to store data of ross Ross is a 21 year old male so we will create an object of a person class which will have properties like name equal to ross age is equal to 21 and gender is equal to male similarly if you want to add data about rachel then we will create an another object of a person's class which will have the properties of rachel once an object gets created we can save it in any database in this way we can map our real life problems to the object oriented programming concept all the object oriented programming concepts are taken from real life so let me know in the comment section if i should explain op concept with real life example moreover you can suggest which op concept should i explain next follow my channel for more such explain constructor with real life analogy let's consider real life example of nobita every day when nobita wakes up he will create a breakfast for himself then he cleans his house and does all his daily activities again next day when he wakes up he will perform the same task so making breakfast and cleaning house are repeated task for nobita so one day nobita built a robot to perform this task now whenever he wakes up robot will prepare breakfast for him and will clean his house constructor is similar to robot which will perform some task when object of a class is created in op class is just a structure so when we create a object of a class we have to assign values to the variables of a class for example if you are creating object of a human class then while creating object we have to assign values to the variables like name age and gender we can manually assign these values whenever object of a class gets created or we can create a constructor which will automatically does this task for us so constructor is like a robot that nobita created which will automatically perform some activities like assigning values to the variable whenever object of a class gets created now let's create a class human which has three variables that is name age and gender constructor is a special type of function that doesn't have the return type and whose name is same as a class name so we will create a function which will receive three parameters that is actual name actual age and actual gender we will assign these values to our class variable so whenever we create a object of a class constructor will initialize these variables for us now let's create an object of a human class in a main method and while creating we will pass the name age and gender to the object so now if you try to access the variable using object then you can see the values that you assign to this object that's it for today's video if you like this video then follow my channel for more such video polymorphism with real life example word polymorphism is a combination of two different words that is poly and morphism poly means multiple and morphism means forms or state so polymorphism in general means one object can have multiple forms consider example of rachel rachel plays different roles in her life rachel is a girlfriend of ross she is also mother of emma and she is also better in restaurant this means rachel is a single person who is performing different roles means one person having multiple forms this is called as polymorphism in real life now let's understand what is polymorphism in object oriented programming consider we create add function for adding numbers if we pass two numbers to this function then it will add two numbers and if we pass three numbers then it will add three numbers that means one function is having multiple forms so two or more function can have same name but different parameters or functionality this is called as polymorphism in op let me know in the comment section about what are the different ways to achieve polymorphism follow my channel for more you such videos method overloading method overloading is a way to implement polymorphism polymorphism means one object or function can have multiple forms so method overloading or function overloading is a feature that allows a class to have multiple functions with the same name but with different parameters consider we want to add two numbers then we will create a function with name add two numbers which will take two parameters and return its sum now we want to create a function that will add three numbers so now we can create a function with the name add three numbers which will take three parameters and return its sum now you can see that we are just giving different names to this function and it's kind of confusing because in the end these functions are just adding numbers so instead of giving different names we can define a function with the same name but with different parameters for example for adding two numbers we will define a function with a name add which will take two parameters and for adding three numbers we will again define a function with a name add which will take three parameters so if you want to add three numbers you can just call this function add and pass three parameters to it so now you can see that we have defined two function with the same name this concept is called as method overloading and when you call this overloaded function then compiler will decide
which function to call at a compile time. That's why this type of polymorphism is called as compile time polymorphism. Follow my channel for more. Let's explain method overriding with real life example. Method overriding is a feature that allows us to use power of inheritance and polymorphism. Inheritance means child class can access variables and methods of parent class, and polymorphism means one object or function can have multiple forms. So method overriding or function overriding is a feature that allows us to have multiple functions with the same name but in different classes. That is in parent and child class. Consider example of banking system. RBI and our government have defined some rules for banking. Like every bank should give interest to all users on their money, and all other banks like SBI and HDFC has freedom to define how much interest rate they want to give. So to implement this banking system, we will create a parent class called RBI, which will define the rate of interest method, which will print seven percent as interest rate, which is generic guideline that RBI gives. But all banks can change the rate of interest based on their strategy. For example, consider SBI class, which is a child class for RBI class. Since SBI is a child class, it will have access to all the methods of a parent class. Means rate of interest method is already present in SBI class, but we can redefine the rate of interest method for SBI bank. So we can define the method with the same name, that is rate of interest in SBI class, which will print six percent as interest rate. So child class redefine the method or provided specific implementation of a method defined in parent class. Means now two classes, that is parent and child class, has a method with the same name. This concept is called as method overriding. Follow my channel for more such videos. Can you explain encapsulation with real world example? All object oriented programming concepts are inspired by real life example, and encapsulation is also one such a concept. Have you ever seen a capsule used for medication? It is made up of two components. First is the medication itself, and second is the outer shell, which is used to protect medication from various factors like cold and hot environment. So important medication is wrapped into some container called capsule, which is used to protect it from outside contact. This concept is called as encapsulation. Similarly, in object oriented programming, variables and functions are Wrapped into classes and object, you can consider class as an outer container that protects variables and function from any outside unauthorized access. So, wrapping of variables and function into single unit like a class is called as encapsulation in object-oriented programming. Encapsulation is used for restricting access to the variables and function, and it is also used for data hiding. That's it for today's video. If you like this video, then follow my channel for more such videos. Can you explain abstraction with real life example? All object oriented programming concepts are inspired by real life example, and abstraction is also one such a concept. Let's consider example of Instagram reel. Instagram shows only relevant information to you, like likes of the video, comments of the video, description of the video, and hides the confidential and irrelevant information, like ID of the video. Country of origin of the video and the complex algorithm that Instagram has used to show this video to us. If we show all these details to the user, then user will get confused. Here, abstraction comes into the picture. Abstraction is a mechanism that allows us to hide irrelevant or confidential information, so user can only see the relevant and essential details. We can achieve abstraction in multiple ways, like using abstract classes and access modifiers. You can check out my YouTube video for it. Follow my channel for more such videos.